All right, here is the second part of lesson 3.3. We're going to be doing the proofs of some theorems, and then we're going to do some algebra examples. Right, this one right here, we're going to work on proving the alternate interior angle converse theorem is true. Alternate interior angle converse theorem. So I'll write that up at the top. This is the proof of the alternate interior angle converse theorem. All right. So copy this picture down on your notes, pause it if you need to, because I'm going to move right into the proof, and here's your given and what we're trying to prove. So 1 and 2 are congruent, we're going to try to prove that line L and M are parallel. You'll notice there are no marks anywhere on these lines. Remember, those shaded triangles means that the lines are already parallel. We don't know that, we're trying to prove they are parallel, so that's why there's no marks on them. Alright, I have my two column proof ready to go. All right, so. I already got my statement, angle one is congruent to angle two because it's a given. Now let's come back up here to this picture. I want you to ignore down here this section and just look at angle one and angle three. You should know something about angle one and angle three. What do you know about angle one and angle three? Hopefully you know that they are congruent. Okay, You guys remember why these are congruent. What kind of angles are they? doesn't have two lines, oh, well, all three, it just has two meeting here. These are across from each other. If you do not remember that that is the vertical angle theorem, you have a lot of studying to do. You absolutely need to know the vertical angle theorem. Now, look back here, we don't even look at the picture anymore, okay? You notice we have something repeating. What do we do when something repeats like this? Go like this, we skip past it, and we link up two and three together. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's write that down. What is that called when we skip right past angle one? You guys should remember that idea as well. If you don't remember this idea, it's a big deal. You've got to get it memorized. That's the transitive property of congruence. Okay, transitive property of congruence. All right, let's go back up and look at the picture. Two and three. So I don't even need angle one now, so let me cover that one up. Okay, I've still got the lines, I just don't need angle one. What kind of angles are two and three? Three is at the top left, two is also at the top left. So those are in the same position. What means in the same position? Hopefully you remember that's corresponding angles. All right, look back at what we learned about just a little bit ago. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent, so we have, look at it, two and three are congruent. We just proved that by the transitive property. Then the lines are parallel. So we can say the lines are parallel. L is parallel to M. Remember those two lines going like that is our symbol for parallel. And what's our reason? The corresponding angle converse postulate. We can do a little bit of abbreviating as long as I know exactly what you mean by your abbreviations. Okay, that's it. We proved that the alternate interior angle converse theorem works. Now, we had to use the corresponding angle converse postulate to prove it. Remember, postulates are unproven, it makes sense. Theorems are proven, they're usually based off of postulates. Vertical angle theorem was based off the linear pair postulate. All right? But that's the proof of the alternate interior angle converse theorem. All right, let's look at the next one. This is the proof of the alternate exterior angle converse theorem. Proof of the alternate exterior angle converse theorem. All right, go ahead and copy this picture down. Okay, I've got a P and a Q and a 1 and a 3 and a 2. Make sure you get the 1, the 2, and the 3 in the right spot, otherwise the proof won't make sense to you. I have some givens here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And P is parallel to Q is what we're trying to prove. Alright, so into our proof, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that's a given. This proof is almost the exact same as the one we just did, so I want you to try it on your own. Alright, so pause, try it. Come back in you know, three or four minutes, five minutes, however long it takes you. Look back at the one you just did for a little bit of guidance. And then once you're done with it, turn the video back on and take a look at it. 
All right, you should have done this proof by now on your own. If you got stuck, it's okay. Follow along. If you think you got it right, follow along. All right, make sure your answers are matching up with mine. All right, so we know that one is parallel to two by given. Look at two and three here again. You should notice that they are vertical angles, so they have to be congruent because of the vertical angle theorem. Sometimes I use the angle symbol for an abbreviation, so I write the word angle out. All right. Now we notice that two is repeated, so we can skip it. And that whole idea of skipping the thing in the middle is called the transitive property. Since we're talking about congruence, it's the transitive property of congruence. That makes sense. Now let's look back up the picture at one and three. We don't need two down here anymore. Top right, top right, they're in the same position. Same position, it's called corresponding angles. So yes, my lines have to be parallel because of the corresponding angle converse postulate. There's the proof of this theorem. Okay, that one shouldn't have been too bad. Next one's gonna be a little bit longer though. All right, go ahead and put that one away. Rewind if you need to look at any of that again. All right, here we go. Copy this picture down. This is the proof of, and I'll write this up at the top, proof of the consecutive interior angle converse theorem. Okay, copy that picture down. Our given is that angle one is uh, supplementary with angle two, and we're gonna try to prove that S and T are parallel. So copy that down, pause it if you need to get it copied, because I'm gonna move on pretty quick here. All right, here we go. Angle one and two are supplementary, that's a given. Now, I'm not even gonna look up the picture right now. All right, well, there's two different ways we could do this. I'm gonna shorten it up a little bit. What do you know about two and three? We're not even gonna mess with the 180. Let's cover this up, what do we know about two and three? Hopefully you guys remember the form, some special name called a linear pair, and you should know things about a linear pair. Right, what do you know about a linear pair? Linear pairs are always supplementary. So angle two and angle three are supplementary. If I can squeeze that in there. And the reason for that is the linear pair postulate. Now, if you don't know the linear pair postulate, you absolutely have to get it memorized. We're gonna use it a lot this year. Now this is a theorem we don't use a lot, but it's gonna come in real handy right here. If two angles, in this case one and three, are supplementary to the same angle, that angle being angle two, then those two angles have to be what to each other? If two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then those two angles have to be congruent to each other. So angle one is congruent to angle three. Does anyone remember why? Remember why, go ahead and write that reason down. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they have to be congruent to each other. Because remember why? It's called the congruent supplements theorem. Now, we don't use it a lot. And we could have done this proof without using the congruent supplements theorem. I'm gonna tell you how we could have done it. It just takes a lot longer. What we would have done is we would, we would have used the definition of supplementary to say that the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. We would have said two and three are supplementary still because of the linear pair postulate. And then we said, would have said the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180. We would have skipped the 180. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals measure of angle two plus measure of angle three. We would have subtracted the measure of angle two from both sides. The measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. Then we would have changed from equal back to congruence using our definition of congruence. So if you think through all that, one step here, definition of supplementary would have been a second step. Third step, definition of supplementary would have been a fourth step. Skipping the 180 by the transitive property would have been a fifth step. Subtracting would have given us a sixth step. And then switching back to congruent at the end would have been a seventh step. So this is really only three steps so far would have taken seven steps otherwise. Remember what I keep telling you, theorems are just shortcuts. In this case, this theorem saved us from seven steps down to three steps. So it saved us four steps altogether. 
All right, we like that kind of theorem. All right, last thing, one and three. All right, we're not looking at two right now, just one and three. One is bottom left, three is also bottom left. So what do we know if the corresponding angles are congruent and the lines have to be parallel? Once again, that's because of the corresponding angle converse postulate. Make sure you get in the habit of knowing when to use converse. Anytime, anytime you're trying to prove the angles are congruent, okay, you're going to be using these converse ones instead of the regular ones. All right, so that's your consecutive interior angle converse theorem. So we proved all three of those theorems so far work. We have one left to go, and that one is the transitive property of parallel lines theorem. So copy this picture down. I've got three lines now, A, B, and C, still a single transversal, and I have angles one, two, and three marked. Given A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, and we are going to try to prove that A is parallel to C. That's actually what we did on the other one, we didn't prove it. I had it written out that we're just gonna skip the middle. So the middle in this case is line B. All right, so A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C. Now some people will write their givens on the same step and just kind of put a comma in between them. I usually separate them out. Either way is okay. All right, now let's look at this. If A is parallel to B, so I don't have this at all, okay? If A is parallel to B, so actually we can put some marks on A and B. All right, then what do we know about angles one and angle two? Okay, they're both top left. So if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles have to be congruent. Now, that is not a converse, okay? We already knew the lines were parallel, so that's a regular, that's what we learned back in lesson two, corresponding angle postulate. Okay, now let's look at B and C instead. So we're gonna ignore all of line one here. All right, well, I can put a mark again on C. Let me do that real quick. Okay, but A is all covered up here. All right, if B and C are parallel, well, two is top left, three is top left. Right. So there's corresponding again, so angle two and angle three have to be congruent. Once again, we already knew the lines were parallel, right? so that's corresponding angle postulate, it's not a converse. Now, what do you see again? We have something repeated, so what can we do to it? We can skip it, angle one is congruent to angle three. Transitive property of congruence. And now, let's look back at our picture one last time. We only have angle one and angle three we're dealing with now, so angle two is now out of the picture, so we'll cover that up. All right, angle one, still top left. Angle three is still top left, okay? So they gotta be congruent. Uh, well, actually, we already knew they were congruent. It forces lines to be parallel, right? Which lines was it? In this case, it was A and C. Why? Corresponding angle converse postulate. Okay, this one's a converse, all right? In this case, we use regular because we already knew the lines are parallel and went to congruent angles. Regular again, we knew the lines are parallel, we went to congruent angles. Transitive property get to here. When we are going from congruent angles to parallel lines though, we switch the order. That's why we have to put the word converse in there, all right? Here we go, last one. Pause this, we're gonna do some real quick algebra on these two examples and then we'll be done, okay? So go ahead and pause this, I'm not gonna let it run. All right, you should have this copied down by now. If these lines are going to be parallel, what has to be true about these angles? Well, they are alternate exterior angles, so they would have to be congruent, their measures would have to be equal. So let's see what that looks like. Three X plus two equals 5x minus 46. Okay, I'm going to subtract 3x. 2 equals 2x minus 46. I'm going to add 46. 48 equals 2x. Right, these canceled here, these canceled here. I'm going to divide by 2. These cancel. And I get x equals 24. Quick check. 5 times 24 is 120. 
120 minus 46 is 74 degrees. Okay, let's check up here. 3 times 24 is 72. 72 plus 2 is 74 degrees. Our answer makes sense. They both gave us 74 degrees. Remember, if the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if x equals anything other than 24, we don't have parallel lines here. Okay, let's look at this example. Once again, copy it down real quick. I'm not going to wait a long time before I start into it. So copy it down. You can try it on your own real quick, see what you think. But I'm going to tell you what, if you set them equal to each other, you're going to get it wrong. All right, let's look at it real quick. Why are they not equal to each other? Because what kind of angles are these? They're on the same side of the transversal, so they're consecutive interior. Consecutive interior angles have to be supplementary. They have to add to equal 180. Combine our like terms. 26x minus 2 equals 180. Add the 2. 26x equals 182. Divide by 26. These cancel and we get x equals 7. Check our answer real quick. 6 times 7 is 42. 42 minus 4 is 38 degrees. 20 times 7 is 140. Plus 2 is 142 degrees. What's 142 plus 38? It's 180. It makes sense. It works. That is the end of Lesson 3.3's second video. So make sure you understand when to use converse. We're not going to have to redo those proofs all the time, but just make sure you understand how to do the algebra definitely. All right, and we'll see you guys in class.